Right, we're looking at the 2021 solid geometry question. Um, to start with, uh, they've asked us to do some planning, first of all, to get these views onto my board. What views are they, are they looking for? They asked you to draw the given top view, the right view, and the front view. Now, uh, you first of all need to know what you're looking at over here. That would be my front view. That is my top view. That would be my right view. Remember that the right view would be drawn on the left-hand side if it is a... Uh, first angle orthographic projection. Right, so um, I need to start out and go, well, that triangular part is obviously going to be on my right view. So I need to figure out where I need to start my right view on this board and try and give myself as much space as possible. It says that the length of side for that triangle is 66 millimeters. I'm setting my pair of compasses to 66 millimeters and I'm just going to make a little arc coming around like that. Okay. And I go to that point over there and make a little arc over there. That would be the distance that I've got over there from the point to that line over there. Now, I obviously don't want to work right up against the edge of the board, but it gives me an indication as to how far away from the edge of the board I need to move. I'm going to start out and I'm going to say, all right, the back of my triangle, I'm going to place it about that far away. In other words, giving myself a bit of a gap. You can see that gap between there and there would give me the gap that I need between the edge of that uh, borderline and where the triangle is going to be. Right, so I then say, all right, I can take my pair of compasses, still set at that 66, and I'm going to draw a little arc. Let's start it over there. Little arc coming around like this. There we go. Take it to that side, draw a little arc coming around like that. And with that, I can then draw in straight away my triangle that I need for my right view. There it is. There's the one side, 66 millimeters. There's the other side at 66 millimeters. And I need that side over there, also 66 millimeters. It is an equilateral triangle. Right. Once I've got that in place, I need to find the center of that triangle. I'm going to just draw a little construction line coming from that corner at that 60 degree. I'm going to go to that corner, draw a line coming across over here. And that would give me the center of the triangle, which gives me that point over there, which if you look at this, they've told us that the, um, the um, axes of both tubes lie in a common vertical plane. So there is the axis that they're talking about. And there is the axis over there, which the uh, center of the hexagon needs to go through as well. So if I can find that, I can then start working from that point coming down over here. Just going to draw a construction line coming down over there and I'm going to measure off. It says that I've got 36 millimeters over there, 36 millimeters down to this X, Y axis. Measure off that 36 millimeters. Come in over there, mark that off over there and draw a construction line coming across. There's a construction line coming across and it's 36 millimeters down. Right, once I've got that, I then say, all right, um, where do I want the view to really start over here? That length over there, um, that's my triangle. I want to give myself a bit of space over here. I know that the, um, this view is much too close over here, so I'm going to give myself a little bit of a space over here. And I'm going to say, well, let's start with that 90 millimeter length that they've given over there for the triangular part on my front view. Let's place that about over, over there. All right, there's my 90 millimeters over there. And I'm going to draw in the edges of my triangles. That would be on my front view and top view. Front view and top view, the edges of the triangles. That would be that part over there, that part over there, that part over there, and that part over there. Right. Um, it says that I need to move 45 millimeters across to the center of this hexagon. To find that, well, I know that that's 90. Therefore, it's exactly in the middle. To find the middle, I'm going to draw a little construction line at 45 degrees from that corner and 45 degrees from that corner, giving me the 45 millimeters going across to the center over there. Right, once I've done that, I can now say, all right, they've given me a 10 millimeter uh, distance from that X, Y axis over there down to where I need to start. So I measure off 10 millimeters. Coming over here, I'm just gonna measure off from that point over there, 10 millimeters, and I'm going to draw a construction line 
coming across over there. 10 millimeters down from the XY axis. And I know that they've given me a side length of 36 millimeters over here. I'm going to measure off 18 millimeters. 18 millimeters, go in over there, measure off 18 over there, measure off 18 over there, giving me a distance of 36 millimeters for the side of that hexagon. Draw that in straight away, and you can set your pair of compasses to that length of 36 millimeters. Once I've done that, I'm going to arc onto that perpendicular line coming down over there, and from that point over there, that would be the midpoint of that hexagon, and I can draw a circle coming around like that. I'll draw a construction line coming across over here. Um, that gives me that center line going across over there. Um, I can actually draw that as a center line straight away. You'll get marks for it. So uh, long dash, short dash, 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 long dash. Um, and I can now say I've got the center line, which needs to go up over here as well. Uh, long dash, short dash, 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 long dash. Um, and from there, I can now start drawing my hexagon. Take my 60 degree set square, and I can draw a line going down over here to the edge of that circle. And I can draw a line coming down over here to the edge of the circle. 60 degrees coming down over here to the circle. 60 degrees coming down over here to the circle and draw a line going across over here to give my hexagon. Um, I need to figure out where this triangle is going to be on this thing. How do I do that? Well, if you know anything about your uh, first angle orthograph projection, you might have seen them use a 45 degree line. Now, that's going to be quite useful to us in this drawing. Um, I've got the center, 45 degree line going through it. And I can now say, all right, take a line coming down from my triangle over there, touches the 45 degree line, and I can take a line coming across over here, coming across over here, you'll see it coming across from there to there, and I can now draw in the side of my triangle. There it is, coming across over there, coming across over there. Um, the point of the triangle over there, corner of the triangle, not the point. I'm going to take that across into my view over here, and I can draw in that little piece of line over there, representing the top view of the two pipes, the one triangular and the one hexagonal. Right, I need to now transfer all of that information into this view, and also into that view to try and figure out what the whole hexagon and all that looks like. Right, I'm going to start out, well, while we're busy with it, let's draw that right view of it. Um, I'm going to take lines coming across from here, from my hexagon coming across to the 45 degree line, and I'm going to draw a line coming up over here for that side of the triangle. We've got the center already going up there. Let's take it further up there. And I can take these corners over here of this hexagon across the 45 degree line and take that up into my picture over there. The base of the hexagon you will see is from there going across to there. Um, the top of the hexagon they say is 72 millimeters up. Measure that off quickly. 72 millimeters up. Take that over there and mark that off on my drawing. I can draw a line going across over here, from there, going all the way across over there, giving me my um, top of the hexagon. And I can then draw in a line coming down over here, and a line coming down to the triangle, and a line coming down to there. Right, once I've got that in place, um, I can then start figuring out what I'm actually seeing over here and try and get that into my front view. You'll see that they've given you an incomplete front view. So let's start out and get some numbers going over here. I'm going to label my hexagon um, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. 
That's right at the top. Let's take that across. Number one, going over here, going up to the top, and I'll have number one and number four. You'll see that's on the same line. I have got number five and six, five and six, and I have got number two and three, two and three over there. Really important to see that idea. Those numbers are on the top of the hexagon. I'm going to say, well, I've actually got a number one, let's call it A, and number two A down at the bottom, and number three A, number four A, number five A, and number six A, all down at the bottom. Let's have a look at this. I just need to draw in a line over there, which I haven't done yet. One line and number four line coming down. Let's have a look at this. I have got a number um, number 2A and number 3A down at the bottom. I've got a uh, number 5A and a number 6A down at the bottom. You can see that coming over there. And I've got a number 1A and a number 4A down at the bottom. You'll see that uh, I maybe do a little bit too much numbering, but uh, it helps me at the end of the day to figure out what's going on when I'm doing this. Let's take these lines going up over here from my hexagon. There is line number one going up there. There's num line number four going up there. Um, and I can then draw in the base of this thing going across over there and the top of this thing going across over here. Right, um, that line over there is line number one. Now we said that line number one is at the top and 1A at the bottom. I've got number four at the top and 4A at the bottom. I have got number three, now watch this, number three line coming down over there. I've got a number three over here and a number five at the back. I've got a number two coming down over here. Number two and a number six at the back. I've got a 2A down at the bottom and a 6A at the back. I've got a number 3A down at the bottom and a number 5A at the back. Right, very important to see those numbers over there so that you get that picture in your mind all the numbers at the bottom, all the numbers at the top. And I'll say, all right, number one. There is number one, it is coming down to the triangle. And I'm going to label that point, point A. Big A over there. I've got no line number one coming down here. Where is point A? Here we go. I'm going to take point A across to number one. There is point A on number one. Uh, it then goes down and I can draw a line coming down from number one to where A is. Why can I see that? Well, if you look at it, if I'm standing over here, I'll be able to see this line coming down from number one until it hits point A. I'm going to put a big A over there where point number one is. I then look over here and I'm looking across, I can see point number two or line number two. It is coming down and I'm going to label that point over there, point B. Point B, I'm going to take across over here until I hit line number two, label that point number B. I'm going to draw a line coming down from two to where B is. I then say, all right, um, I've also got line three over here coming down and I'm going to call that point C. Point C, I'm going to be able to draw a line coming across from point C to where line three is. There it is, there is point C. Look at this, I've got point B on two and I've got point C on three. I then say, all right, from, you can see line four coming down here, line four, I've got a point which I'm going to call point D over there. There is point D at that corner over there and I have a point D over here at that corner over there. I can draw in a line coming down to where point D is. You'll see that um, the top of this triangle is over here, coming across, all right, comes across, 
and pokes out the other side. There's hidden detail going across here, isn't there? Okay, there's going to be some hidden detail which is behind this whole story. There is this line over here and we're going to label that line. Let's call that line, um, let's go over here, S, T, and U. Okay, S, T, and U. This line over here in the middle would be S. That one would be line T over there and line T1. Line T going across to line T1 at the back. Right. Um, let's have a look at where this whole line T1 is in this whole story. I've got a line that I'm going to draw across from T to T1, construction line. And I'm going to say, all right, this is quite interesting. Where is this line T and T1 uh, all happening over here? Um, let's have a look. There is my line. There is T coming down, hits the, hits the 45, comes across. Can you see where T is? Going across to T1 over there. And I have a point over here, which I'm going to label. Um, I'm going to label it Z over there. All right, Z. I'm going to take Z up and I'm going to hit that line T1. There is point Z over there. Very important point. Um, not to make it sure that it is Z, okay. I also come across here and I've got to have this point over here where T, no, that is T, line coming across from T1 and we're going to call that W over there. Take that up. There is W, and it hits this point over here. Let's call that W. Right, let's have a look at all of this story. If I'm standing over here, I can see a line going between B and C. There is B and C as a point view. Therefore, I'll be able to see a line going from B to C in this view over here. I have a line which goes from B to A. I've got a line that goes from B to A. Therefore, I can draw a line going from B to A in that view. I've got a line that goes from C to D. I've got a line that goes from C to D. Therefore, I have a line that needs to go from C to D. I have got a line that goes from D to W over there. I've got a line that goes from D to, where is W? W is on this line T1. So there's W over there. Take that across. I've got a line that is going to go from D to W. But if you look at it, that line I'm not going to be able to see. It's going to be in hidden detail. Why? Because it is behind this hexagon over here. So I'm looking over here. That is going to be behind the hexagon. Therefore, it is done in, in detail. Obviously, there is a little piece of line that is coming across, which is also hidden detail. That ridge over there, which I said is hidden detail at the back. Right. I now come along here and I say, I've got a line that goes from A to Z over there. I've got a line that goes from A to, I haven't labeled it yet, Z over there. And I'm going to be able to draw in a line going from A to Z over here. And I obviously need that little bit of hidden detail coming across to where Z is. You can see that T going to Z. I can still see that little piece of line even though it's behind this hexagon part. All right, that's, um, that's that story over there. Let's have a look at this base part over here. Uh, we've got A, B, C, D. Um, let's go over here. Let's start with this point over here. I'm gonna call it E, okay? Point E, let's take that down, take that across. I'm gonna have a point E over there. Right, where is E? Let's take a line coming across from E over here. And I have that point coming up over here, which is point E. So from 1A up to E, I've got that. And I will be able to see that distance over there. No, sorry, not 1A, 2A. 2A coming up. Let's just get a brain over here. Let's look at one going up over here. Let's call that point E, not, not this point. Let's just rub that out. Sorry, my mistake. Start on line one. There's line one over here. 1A going up to that point over there, and we're going to call that E. I'm going to take that across, coming across to 
one, and I'm going to label that point over there, point E. Right, very important. I then say, all right, do I have a line going from 1A up to E? Absolutely, I can see that. Let's have a look at 2A going up to um, F. There is F over there. F is on 2A going across over here. Note this line coming from 2A going up to where F is. And I can label that F. Okay. Um, uh, I've got 3A over here. I'm going to have another point over there called G. 3A, a line coming across from G to 3A going up to G over here. There is G. Um, then I come along here and I say, all right, where is uh, 4A? 4A, do I have a line 4A coming across here? Um, 4A going up to a point H over there. Right, there we go. Definitely, I can do that. So I have a line that is going to go from E to F. I'm going to have a line that goes from F to G. I'm going to have a line that goes from G to H. Okay, but then I need to figure out this little story over here um, where this line over here, U, can you see U over there? U coming across, there is U and U1 on the other side. Um, here is U coming across, U coming across, and I've got U and U1 on this side. Right, let's have a look at what's happening over here. Um, U and U1, that is over there. You can see over here, I'm going to have another two points. Let's call this um, Q, point Q over there. Q comes up over here and it links up on this point over here. I'm going to call that Q over there. And P is over here, P on this line coming out from U1, P coming up over here and I'm going to have a point over there, which I'm going to call P. Right, there's point P. Right, what do I have here? I have got a line that is going to come down from H to P. And I'm going to have a line that is coming down from E to Q. And I have a little piece of hidden detail and a line coming across from U and hidden detail finishing off there. A line coming across from U1 and hidden detail finishing off over there. Right, that is basically what you need. I have a line that is going to come down all the way from T to U, a line that comes down from T to U over there. Sorry, T1 to U1, T to U. And what am I missing? Well, I'm missing this line S. Can I see S? Let's have a look at that. Where is S over here? There is S. Okay, and if I'm standing over here, looking across, the very first line that I'm going to see is S over there. Um, I need some letters over here. I haven't put these, the F and the G in on this view. There's F and G. There's F and G. Um, I've got B and C. I've got B and C. I've got the W. I've got the P. W and P, I've got the Z and the Q, I've got the Z and the Q, I've got the E and the A, and that is all my numbering done beautifully over there. Let's just put these numbers in over here. Where is P? P is going to be over there, um, and Q is also going to be over here. P and Q is also at that corner over there. And I think I've got all the things that I need. Um, Obviously, I've got S and S1, U and U1, uh, T and T1. I've already put that in over there. Right. Once I've got all that in place, I can then say, okay, let's see what they've asked us to develop. They're asking us to develop the triangular part of this thing. And uh, 
What we do now is to draw a line coming down over here. Just a construction line to start with. Um, if it was a multi-sided thing, say it was a hexagon or something like that, I would strongly recommend that you break that line up with the lengths of line. Um, let me just do that quickly. I have uh, 66 millimeters. Let's take that. Let's do this. 66 multiplied by three sides is equal to 198. So I come in over here and I'm going to measure off from that point over there, 198 millimeters. Let's measure off 198. 98, let's just get that measurement. 198 millimeters. It's quite a long way down here. 198. Okay, that is the distance that I need apparently in order to draw in the base of the piece of material that I need for my triangle. Um, I know the height of this triangle is going to be this distance over here. Okay, so I can now draw in a line coming across over here and measure that off beautifully over there. Draw a construction line coming up over here and draw in that line over there. And I can draw in a line going across over here. And I can draw in that going all the way down there. Right, they asked us to make that line SS the seam. So S, and I'm going to call that S1 over there. And S and S1 over there, that is my scene. I need to now break that up into um, three, three equal parts. Uh, the way that we do that, I'm sure you've seen this method done before. Take a line at any angle over here. Let's just get that angle a little bit less so that it's easier for us. Line coming out there at any angle. And I'm going to measure off three equal spaces on it. One equal space, two equal spaces, three equal spaces. Take that, link that up over there with your set squares, like that. And slide it across to make a little line coming down. Slide it across, oh geez. Line it up again. Get that nice and accurate. Slide it across. Slide it across to the new thing, and I've messed up again because of some stuff on my board. There we go, sliding, sliding, sliding. There we go, there is the mark. I can now draw in a line coming across from that point over there. Just a construction line. Don't draw it in dark. Construction line coming across. A construction line coming across. Why am I drawing construction lines? Because I need to do this whole development showing the hole that I need in my triangle. So here we go. Um, what have I got? I've got S coming down to S. I have got T and T1 on that side. I've got U and U1 on that side. Okay, let's have a look at all these distances that I'm going to need on T's and U's and all of that thing. Right, let's start out. I have a point going from T to Z over there. Find T over here, place that distance, and that would be Z. There is point Z. I also have T1 going to W over there. T1 going to W. Mark that off. W. I have got U1 going to P over there. U1 going to P over there, P, and I have got U going to Q over there, U going to Q over there, and label it. Right, okay, then I come along here and I say, I have got a distance over here between S and B, S and B, 
okay? And that is between S and T. Can you see S going to T over there? I've got a distance over there. Uh, so I go along to my S, going towards T, and I mark that down, and I draw a little line going across. Just a construction line coming across. Um, where is that distance from, uh, from B to the edge? There it is, B to the edge. Let's just label this as well. There is S and S1. I haven't put that in over here. Can you see this edge between S and T? And I've got a distance going across from there to there, which is the distance that I need to B. I've got a line coming from there to there, and I can label that as B over there. Um, I also have a distance um, going across to C over here. You see it's the same distance over here from S to where C is, S to where C is, and what is the distance going from the edge to where C is? It is that distance over there. Come, come across here and label that as point C over there. All right, once I've got that, um, I have a distance from S to where A is. There is S to A between um, S and T. So S to A, come over here, measure that off over there, draw a little construction line coming across, and I'm going to measure that distance from the edge to where A is. There is the distance from the edge to A. I come over here, I measure that off, and I label that as A. I've got a distance from A to D over here on that same line. So you can see that distance from S to D. I've already measured that distance from S to where D is. I need to measure out to where D is going to be. That is that distance over there. Pop that in over there. And I can label that as D. Right, I then say, all right, um, I now need to look at these things over here um, of uh, the distance from S1 to F. S1 to F, come over here. There is S1 to where F is. Uh, F and G, let's take a line coming across over here. Okay, S to F, let's have a look. Um, S going across to F is over there. S going across to F is over there. Label that as F. Um, S to G over there. There we go. S to G over there. Label that as G. I also have a line over here um, of E. Okay, so I need to take this distance from S to E over there. Okay, distance from S to E, you'll also see that H is on that line, so I've got another point there called H. So E and H, they're on the same distance. That distance, come over here, S going to H over there. Draw a line coming across. And I'm now going to measure off that distance from the edge to where E is. Take that over there. That would be E. Okay, note U is closest to the E. H is furthest from that edge. So there is H over there. H over there. And I can now join things up nicely over here. I've definitely got a line which goes between F and G. I've definitely got a line that is going to go between G and H. A line going between P and H. Got a line that goes between F and E. I've got a line that goes between E and Q. I've got a line that goes up between Q and Z over there. I've got a line that goes between P and W over here. I've got a line that is going to go between W and D over there. 
I've got a line that goes between A and Z over here. I've got a line that goes between B and A. And I've got a line that goes between C and D. And I've got a line that goes between B and C. And then lastly, what I need to draw in is the line that goes from U up to Q, a line that goes from P to U1. I've got a line that goes from T up to Z, and a line that goes from T1 up to W over there. And that is your drawing done. Um, yeah, I hope that that helps you a little bit. Uh, it's quite complicated. Cheers.